I've noticed that at times Nintendo can put some questionable things into their Mario games. Because Mario games are supposed to be all happy and family friendly, right? So what about this guy, or this creature, and even whatever is going on here? Well, all of these things are some of the most unsettling and out of place moments I've experienced in a Mario game. So today, we're gonna rank the 10 scariest moments of all time from Mario games on today's episode of The Infinite Bits Halloween Extravaganza. What is The Infinite Bits Halloween Extravaganza, I hear you say? Well, throughout the entire month of October, I will be making Halloween themed videos that come out every single Friday leading up to Halloween. And at the end of every video this month, I'll reveal what next week's video is gonna be so you're gonna want to stick around for that All right, let's cue the lightning and start this episode Okay, I've been staring out of this window for too long waiting for lightning to strike but now that it has the mood has been set and this halloween month can commence and yes we are going to be looking at some of the most creepy frightening and just unsettling moments out of any mario games ever and the moment that i find the most creepy out of them all is something i honestly can't believe that they actually included in a mario game but we'll get to that later because for now let's build up to that moment starting with number 10. Okay, so Super Mario Bros. 2, everyone always talks about that flying mass that hunts you down and stalks you. Ooh. But while scary, he didn't actually make the cut for this list. This is because this next enemy did. Okay, so here's the situation. You're playing through this level when you get to the end and pick up the orb like you always do. The jingle plays and everything looks fine at first. Until you realize the exit door that you normally go through comes alive and tries to kill you. Because normally you would just enter this hawk's mouth to finish the level. But nope, now we have a disembodied hawk head flying around trying to kill you. I love even the eerie feeling you get when you walk into the room because the boss music is already playing, yet there seems to be a lack of a boss until surprise, the exit door of all things is what you fight. And just look at this thing, even the design looks horrifying. This was one creepy scare and boss battle. So at this next spot, I'm actually talking about an enemy that spawned multiple games, and it's the only placement on this list that is like this. And these are the eel enemies. From their creepy origins of hiding in ships in Mario 64, to their horrifying teeth in Mario Galaxy, and finally, their almost too realistic design in Mario Odyssey. All versions of these things just give me the creeps. And they always put these guys in the most unsuspecting spots. Like how in Galaxy, they're always in these little caves in a dark part of the waters, just waiting for you to come near. Honestly, I did think these eels were done for when I saw how goofy they made them in 3D Land, but luckily Odyssey brought back the fear I experienced in Mario 64 by bringing back these eels exactly like that game. The design looks pretty similar, and they even placed them back in dark caves and such. Ugh, I'm already getting the creeps from this video. I can't even imagine what the number one spot is gonna be. Now we're talking about the Mario RPGs, and there are plenty of creepy moments from these spin-offs, don't you worry. So why don't we start off with the Thousand Year Door? Why not? And let's start with the very start of that game, your introduction to Rogueport. This whole town is just going on the list for being pretty freaky and out of place for a Mario game. First of all, look at the immediate set piece they present you. It's a freaking noose in the middle of a town. What? You can even play around it like nothing's going on, jeez. Then upon minutes of entering, you see the mafia beat some people up and you get robbed right in broad daylight. Then you enter this sketchy alley and see the rundown part of town, complete with graffiti and wanted signs. Then you enter this house and see a pretty messy place with flies and stuff. Not too bad, right? Well, this was so messed up that it got censored in the West here, because the original Japanese version had a whole crime scene take place here. This was complete with this dead toad outline and blood splattered all over the place. Ugh, now this is unsettling for a Mario game. 
I don't think there's another Mario game with quite the same atmosphere as the original Luigi's Mansion. I can respect how they went for a more creepy and dark vibe unlike any other Mario game since even. Or Luigi game. Whatever you want to call it. However, the most terrifying part of the game, I'd say, is when you get to the top floor or attic of the mansion. I'm just putting this whole area on the list. It's quite a different vibe than what you're used to with all the wooden walls and lightning strikes. Then there's just a bunch of creepy set pieces here, like this room of knights just standing there, some dollhouse ghosts that you need to suck up, and of course, the infamous telephone room. While having mysterious phones ringing alone in the attic is unsettling enough, when you actually pick up the phone and lightning strikes, you'll see a shadow of Luigi hanging himself. I think. Well, maybe. Most likely, it's actually not the case. This is because it's probably a result of a lower camera angle and the poltergeist makes it seem like your shadow hand is hanging, but it does look like it, and everyone on the internet seems to believe so, but regardless, it's still very creepy. <laughs> Super Mario Land 2 is a pretty creative Mario game, and it has a lot of interesting worlds to boot. Take this Pumpkin Land for example, it's the obligatory spooky world, but with a unique twist on things. It's got booze, licky things, tombstones, and uh, walking Jason mask with knife stabbed in its head? No, okay, I was not ready for this enemy. What is up with this? Why are these things so out of place and creepy for a Mario game? I swear I've never seen a Mario game with a knife in general, much less a knife that has been stabbed in a serial killer's head. Like, I know these guys aren't the toughest enemies to defeat, but I definitely give these guys credit in making a very odd and scary enemy with all the limitations of the original Game Boy. Just the design alone seems out of place. And if these things ever got into Mario Maker, I'd flip. Now we're a mere five spots away from seeing the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in a Mario game. So why don't we talk about the newest Mario game now being Odyssey, because they don't really put that many scares in the newer Mario games, right? Well, let's take a trip to the Wooded Kingdom, why don't we? So if you actually jump right off the map, you'll discover a secret section known as the Deep Woods. And things are looking a bit more creepy down here. You can't really see that much, and why is my screen shaking? Whoa, that's a silhouette of a T-Rex, isn't it? And he is also down here with me. Okay, nope! This T-Rex scare was just super unexpected, considering he is only used for a handful of areas in the entire game. And it's a good spot to place him in, just this secret forest. But what's really creepy about this whole situation is that you can't just go back to the normal level. You have to find and plant a beanstalk in order to climb out of here. So in the meantime, you're running around looking for it while being trapped in the dark woods with a T-Rex. <laughs> Alrighty, I had to talk about Mario 64 in this list, how could I not? But let's cut to the chase here and talk about the level Big Boo's Haunt. This level is pretty unsettling on its own with the music and atmosphere and all, but then you start exploring some of the rooms. And okay, I know this is very widely discussed now, seeing as it is a 25 year old game and a revolutionary one at that, but put yourself in the mindset of an eight-year-old kid playing Mario 64 for the very first time. You slowly walk into this room and all there really is is just the piano. Okay, so you cautiously approach it and boom, it comes to life, reveals its true self to you and tries to eat you all while making a very unsettling sound effect. And it doesn't help that they even hid a red coin right beside him. Then in a panic, you run out to the next room only to see flying books now being shot at you. All these inanimate objects are the freakiest thing here. I don't care what you say. Now we're moving on to Yoshi's Crafted World, a very happy and kid-friendly game, right? How is anything scary here? Trust me, I was thinking the same thing until we get to a level called Be Afraid of the Dark. 
And yes, you're gonna be afraid, even without the level telling you to do so. Because almost immediately when entering, you get introduced to the killer clown dolls. Just look at the design of these things. This is straight out of a horror movie. Even how they walk is unsettling, with how they drag one of their arms on the floor and just kind of stumble around. But when they spot you, it's even more freaky how they just charge straight at you and swing their axe that does way too much damage. Just look at how they sprint, ugh. Now I guess you could say that this is a Yoshi game and technically not a Mario game, but when else am I going to talk about this guy? That is truly horrifying. So now we're getting very close to the most creepy Mario moment. And I guess it's only fitting that we're now talking about Super Paper Mario, one of the most out there Mario RPGs. This game even has its own version of the underworld called the Underwear. <laughs> okay, trust me guys, it's a lot scarier than it sounds. Because you eventually get to the river twigs that you have to cross. Legend has it that ghosts in this river will try and drag you down to the bottom. And if you jump in, you'll see all these creepy hands that will do exactly that. Well, they don't exactly drag you, but they still damage you. And just look at this entire setting down here. A super deep lake, these foggy, dark waters, combined with hands that slowly drift towards you wherever you go. This whole area just gives me the chills, but especially the enemies down here. So here we are. Now it's time to talk about the most unsettling moment from any Mario game ever. And of course... It's, once again, from Super Paper Mario. Easily the most freaky part is when you go into this mansion over here and meet this sweet little girl named Mimi, who quickly enslaves you with her other prisoners in the mansion. Huh. I'm starting to think that she isn't just a sweet little girl. So after literally working as a slave for her while dealing with her guards that have whips, you talk to her and she pulls this crap on you. So now she's a giant spider that you can't attack and have to run through her basement as she chases you. You eventually do find a way to attack her in one of the basement bathrooms, but it's still creepy in how you do so. And this is by knocking off each of her spider legs one by one. So between her mansion of slaves, her snapping her neck going all exorcist, and of course chasing you in her creepy spider form, all that combined just makes this little girl the most unsettling, spine-chilling, creepy, horrifying, whatever you call it, moment in any Mario game. And those were all my picks for this video, so now I think it's time to talk about next week's episode. And basically what I'm doing for the video is... Is that... Is that knocking? Knocking coming from my closet. Okay. You have got to be kidding me.